let me give you let me give you just one freebie. Let me give you a little exercise here that you can you can do to kind of find this distortion on your higher notes. Mark with Cardivox Academy, and you may notice I just got a fresh new cut. Yep, just came back from the barbershop today. My boy Roman did a very good job, looking fresh. Fresh denim mother. Anyways, my name is Mark. I am a vocal coach specializing in, well, mostly death metal, death core, <laughs> uh, and metal vocals, but I dip into the raspy singing, the metal singing side of things quite frequently, and I know I'm a little late to the game. Today we're doing The Sound of Silence. This is a live performance that David Draymond did on Conan O'Brien. If you're new to the channel or a regular viewer and you haven't already, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Really helps out a lot. Let's me know what kind of videos y'all want to see. And uh, I don't know, it's fun. It's fun to see the channel grow. It's fun to have conversations in the bottom. You know, I remember the first time I heard Disturbed, it was uh, down with the sickness, and it scared the crap out of my little, my little, what, third third or fourth grade head <laughs> um and then you know of course because it was so weird because it was so scary like i was fascinated with it and the next thing you know i was going down like the like the disturbed system of a down uh like rabbit hole so um <laughs> man those were good times Me hearing metal and rock for the first time that's something i wish i could get back here's a fun question what song kind of got you into harsh music in the first place now of course this isn't as harsh as like infinite annihilator but it's still harsh nonetheless so what kind of made that jump what made you realize like oh metal that's my shtick let us know in the comments below and actually if you have a funny story involved with uh with the first time you heard metal or just kind of something interesting about it if it's uh if it's uh if it's funny if it gets a chuggle i'll pin it i'll pin it at the top why not let's go ahead and check this out let's see what's going on and uh i don't know we'll we'll dive on in i'm interested to hear what his voice sounds like live Chapau. Very soulful. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mm. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left it seems while I was sleeping and the vision that was planted in my brain nice still remains within the sound of silence um, one of the most common things that me and other vocal coaches will get, one of the most common re requests, um, and I, I lurk around other voice teacher subreddits um, just because it's good to know what's going on in your community, right? Um, one of the most common questions we get is, how do I sing higher? And that's an important tool. It's a very important tool. But sometimes some of us, like in our little voice teacher corners, will be like, don't forget the lower end of things. Um, and this is a really good example of, of a well-controlled, nice low end. I think he was, um, let me see. Hello, right there. It's an F sharp, it's an F sharp. So here's a good example. Oftentimes when we sing low, we either push too hard on it, we squeeze on it, and our, our um, our low singing will sound a little forced. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Right? Other times, the trick to singing in your lower end comfortably is to just relax. Relax into it. Very, very common thing. Um, <clears throat> but oftentimes people will get a little too lazy. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Right? And it, it sounds a little lazy. So one thing we need to remember is pitch is always going to be important. Pitch is always going to be important as well as resonance. Pitch is... Pitch is Pitch sounds good when resonance is in play. I, I am a big believer in that you have to have two together. You have to combine them. So I can just lazily say, hello, darkness, my old friend. Or I can say, hello. Let's see. What was that note again? F sharp? Hello, hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. See? Bring I bring the pitch in there. I've come to talk with you again. Starts to sound a little bit better. Let's keep going though, because I'm sure there's a lot happening. 
In restless dreams I walked alone Narrow streets of cobblestone Neath the halo of a street lamp I turned my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stared by the flash of a neon light that split in the night. Oh. Do you hear how he released a little bit? He got a little bit breathy when he said, and split the night, and split the night. Nice touch. Let's hear that again. Of a neon light that split in the night. Touch the sound of silence And in the naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more Sorry. <laughs> this channel is edutainment. Edutainment. So, when he climbed... And in the naked light I saw, and in the naked light I saw, right? One thing is super, super relaxed, super, super precise, right? He's really just kind of climbing a scale. And sometimes with singing and really any other instrument, working your scales or like your rudimentary elements is, is pretty boring. But this is an example of how important it is. He climbs that scale perfectly, leans on that higher note in saw, doesn't work hard for it, and it comes across nice and warm and beautiful. Let's listen to it again, and I'm going to try to shut up for a second. But I'm here to teach y'all. Come on, I can't hear something like that and not tell you how it works. Terrible. Flash of a neon light It's split in the night And touch the sound of silence and in the naked light I saw Ten thousand people, maybe more People talking without speaking People hearing without listening People writing songs And voices never share no one dares disturb the sound of silence. For say I you do not know. Silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words and Okay, so that's a nice long section. So one thing I really want to point out here, one of the most common things I run into with my singing students, technically all of my students are singing students because listen, if you come to me and you want to learn how to do gutturals and pig squeals, you're going to learn a little bit of basic intonation first. Sorry, preview. That's what it's going to do. Anyways, um, <clears throat> or maybe not first first, but mixed in, I should say. Um, but one thing I really want to point out is he's not reaching for his high notes, right? I think I, and you know, I, I'm not sure. I don't have it memorized, but I think he was around uh, A. Teach my words and I might reach you. Yeah, I think that's I think that, that's where he was. Did you notice how he didn't look like he was working harder for that as his low notes? Right. It was the same. It was the same amount of work. Right. I always tell my students, we need to think of high notes not as high above us, but high frequency. And our low notes as not being low below us, but low frequency. All of our notes are right here. All of our notes are right here with maybe a little, we can imagine a little bit of variation with like our head voice and our chest voice, but relaxing. Let the notes out. Don't force them out. Don't reach for them. They're already there. Just let them out. Um, notice, by the way, 
that the relaxation was coordinated with the little bit of grit that he was putting on his voice. And you could hear that the grit was not on his vocal folds, right? Because the pitch was still nice and even. Now, it does sound like there might be a little live processing on his voice. I'm just gonna say I don't I don't care. I really don't, right? When I was performing and I was doing mostly like uh mostly like gutturals and stuff, they put reverb on me. You know? My voice doesn't actually sound like that. Who cares? Let's go. And the people bowed and prayed. Oh, yes! To the neon god they made. And the sign lashed out in its warning. And the words that it was for me. And the sign said the word. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. Did you hear how he just turned that grid off and got really easing? R really? He, I'm sorry. I'm so excited. I'm talking over myself. He let the grid out and he eased on to the end of halls. Ugh. We're going to listen to that whole section again, but I just want you to. Well, actually, let's go back. Let's go back. I'm sorry, because when he says the people bowed and prayed like that's that's kind of where my specialty kicks in. Let's talk about that. That's why a lot of you are here, right? That's what this channel does. Okay, so <clears throat> you're going to notice that he didn't work for that either, right? Now, here's the trick. We could make that sound and it would sound mostly right. And to, you know, someone who may not be trained or they just listen to music for fun, which no shade, that's a, there's nothing wrong with that. They might not know the difference. However, when we do this, we're placing a lot of that distortion here, right? Let's let's hear those notes again, because I don't I don't have the melody memorized. People bowed and prayed. Okay, so now I know there's a jump cut here, but I had to do my levels because I just demonstrated it and it kind of blew everything out. So <clears throat> let's do that again. So the melody he sings is of silence. Okay, so I'm gonna back up here. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have like a good compressor compression setup here, so gotta do what I gotta do. But anyways, so and the people bowed and prayed, bowed and prayed to the neon god they made. Right, that's super easy. That's not a lot of work. One thing you're gonna hear a lot of people say, not just me. This is a very common term, is that we lean into our distortion. We don't push on our distortion and what i mean by this is imagine that there's like imagine that you're moving a refrigerator across the floor right you could stand in front of it and you could just push with your arms and you're probably going to move it but you're going to be putting a lot of work on your biceps or you could plant your feet put your arms on it and lean your body weight into it right that's what we do here when i'm doing this you're going to notice that there's there's no tension and you know i'm not trying to flex or anything here y'all can learn this too anybody can do this um it's just a matter of learning the proper technique but you know, I'm like kind of, I'm, I'm like smushed in the corner here. Me and my keyboard, we're chilling. But, <clears throat> and the people bowed and prayed, bowed and prayed to the neon god they made, they made. Right, and I think that's, uh... Let me give you, let me give you just one freebie. Let me give you a little exercise here that you can you can do to kind of find this distortion on your higher notes. So um, one thing you can do if you're having trouble with higher notes, which this isn't this isn't too high, but it's right around the vocal break for a lot of dudes, um, you know, or I should say with a lot of pe for a lot of people with vocal folds of a size similar to mine. Um, that's what I should say. But anyway, <clears throat> so um, E, F, F sharp. That's kind of our zone. Anyways, so when we go here, if this note's hard, if we're, if we're kind of like straining for it, ay, 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 we can get nasally and then drop the nasality out. Hey, hey, easy now. 
And then what you can do when you can support that note, you want to wait till you're relaxed here. Okay. If you have tension in your neck, take, hold off. And you want to make sure that you have a full understanding of what supporting with your diaphragm means. Like, what does that mean? Right. When you can put that into play, one thing you're going to do is you're going to ramp into it and you're going to imagine taking your distortion and just touching it to the roof of your mouth. You're going to imagine a little ball of, of breath. And I get more into detail with my students on this. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to imagine that little ball of distortion going pop, just like gently landing on and sticking on your soft palate. So, yay, 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 right? So, yay. And you'll notice that the distortion kind of happens at the top of that ramp. Again, if you try this and you feel like you're pushing on the bottom of your vocal folds or you're like <sighs> taking a big shoulder breath and smashing with your stomach, hold off. But yay, bowed and prayed, prayed. And there you go. Let's keep going, though, because um, that's enough of that. I could talk about that forever. And the sign lashed out in its Classy. I want to talk about something that I just would have done differently. It's it's not a broken rule. He didn't do anything wrong. It's just it's just what I, I just would have done it differently, right? And just a thought here. So when he holds on to the word silence, his vibrato comes through a closed. I would have held out that silence versus silence, silence. That's just me. The way he did it sounds phenomenal. He killed it. That's just what I would have done. Also, you'll notice that a lot of like rock singers, although this, I mean, Disturbed, they've been more rock, they've been more metal, they've had a lot of different sounds. Um, You'll notice they have this sound uh, kind of like this right here. Within the sound, sound of silence, silence. It's just a relaxed soft palate, it's what it is. Some people hate that. Um, I think it sounds okay if it's done, you know, it's not over-exaggerated. And I think he sounds good here. It's not my favorite sound, I'll be honest with you. But like, if I had a student who wanted to do that, I wouldn't be against them learning it. I'd say, okay, don't like, don't douse it all over your music. Or actually, it's fine. It's your music. Do whatever you want. Um, but that would just be my my little opinion. So let's hear that again. <clears throat> In the sun. Yeah, like, it's beautiful the way he does it. I just probably would have gone, of silence. But that's just a stylistic thing. Um, well, <laughs> took me forever to hear this song, but absolutely phenomenal. Like, I, I loved it. I wish I had done this sooner. Um, <clears throat> but again, if you enjoyed the content, if this was fun, go ahead, uh, you know, like, share, and subscribe, all that, all that beautiful stuff here. But anyways, thank you so much for hanging out while we talk about David Draymond's performance live of The Sound of Silence on Conan O'Brien. A little late to the party, but gosh dang, that was awesome. And as always, many thanks, much love, I'm out.